Welcome to the Enchanted Library, where we turn the pages of books, beautiful and old, living and magical. It's time to curl up, get cozy, and join us on an adventure. Today we're reading from the Wonder Book by Nathaniel Hawthorne, The Golden Apples. Yes, it was the self-same old man of the sea whom the hospitable maidens had talked to him about. Thanking his stars for the lucky accident of finding the old fellow asleep, Hercules stole on tiptoe toward him and caught him by the arm and leg. Tell me, cried he, before the old one was well awake, which is the way to the garden of the Hesperides? As you may easily imagine, the old man of the sea awoke in a fright, but his astonishment could hardly have been greater than that of Hercules the next moment, for all of the sudden the old one seemed to disappear out of his grasp, and he found himself holding a stag by the fore and hind leg. But still he kept fast hold. Then the stag disappeared, and in its stead there was a seabird fluttering and screaming, while Hercules clutched it by the wing and claw, but the bird could not get away. Immediately afterward, there was an ugly three-headed dog, which growled and barked at Hercules, and snapped fiercely at the hands by which he held him. But Hercules would not let him go. In another minute, instead of the three-headed dog, what should appear but Geron, the six-legged man-monster, kicking at Hercules with five of his legs in order to get the remaining one at liberty. But Hercules held on. By and by, no Geron was there, but a huge snake, like one of those which Hercules had strangled in his babyhood, only a hundred times as big, and it twisted and twined about the hero's neck and body, and threw its tail high into the air, and opened its deadly jaws as if to devour him outright, so that really was a terrible spectacle. But Hercules was no whit disheartened, and squeezed the great snake so tightly that he soon began to hiss in pain. You must understand that the old man of the sea— though he generally looked so much like the wave-beaten figurehead of a vessel, had the power of assuming any shape he pleased. When he found himself so roughly seized by Hercules, he had been in hopes of putting him into such surprise and terror by these magical transformations that the hero would be glad to let him go. If Hercules had relaxed his grip, Woldman would have certainly plunged down to the very bottom of the sea, whence he would not soon have given himself the trouble of coming up in order to answer any impertinent questions. Ninety-nine people out of a hundred, I suppose, would have been frightened out of their wits by the very first of his ugly shapes, and would have taken to their heels at once. For one of the hardest things in this world is to see the difference between real dangers and imaginary ones. But as Hercules held on so stubbornly, and only squeezed the old one so much tighter at every change of shape, and really put him to no small torture— he finally thought it best to reappear in his own figure. So there he was again, a fishy, scaly, web-footed sort of personage, with something like a tuft of seaweed at his chin. "'Pray, what do you want with me?' cried the old one, as soon as he could take breath, for it is quite a tiresome affair to go through so many false shapes. "'Why do you squeeze me so hard? Let me go this moment, or I shall begin to consider you an extremely incivil person.' "'My name is Hercules,' roared the mighty stranger, "'and you will never get out of my clutch "'until you tell me the nearest way to the garden of the Hesperides.' "'When the old fellow heard who it was that had caught him, "'he saw with half an eye that it would be necessary "'to tell him everything he wanted to know. "'The old one was an inhabitant of the sea, you must recollect, "'and roam about everywhere, like other seafaring people.' Of course, he had often heard of the fame of Hercules, and of the wonderful things he was constantly performing in various parts of the earth, and how determined he always was to accomplish whatever he undertook. He therefore made no more attempts to escape, but told the hero how to find the garden of the Hesperides, and likewise warned him of many difficulties which must be overcome before he could arrive thither. "'You must go on thus and thus,' said the old man of the sea." after taking the points of the compass, till you come in sight of a very tall giant who holds the sky on his shoulders. And the giant, if he happens to be in the humor, will tell you exactly where the garden of the Hesperides lies. And if the giant happens to not be in the humor, 
remarked Hercules, balancing his club on the tip of his finger. Perhaps I shall find means to persuade him. Thanking the old man of the sea, begging his pardon for having squeezed him so roughly, the hero resumed his journey. He met with a great many strange adventures, which would be well worth your hearing if I had the leisure to narrate them as minutely as they deserve. It was in this journey, if I mistake it not, that he encountered a prestigious giant who was so wonderfully contrived by nature that every time he touched the earth he became ten times as strong as he had been before. His name was Antaeus. You may see, plainly enough, that it was a very bus difficult business to fight with such a fellow. For as often as he got a knockdown blow, up he started again, stronger, fiercer, and abler to use his weapons than if his enemy had let him alone. Thus the harder Hercules pounded the giant with his club, the further he seemed to be from winning the victory. I have sometimes argued with such people, but never fought with one. The only way which Hercules found it possible to finish the battle was to by lifting Antaeus off his feet into the air and squeezing, squeezing, squeezing him until finally the strength was quite squeezed out of his enormous body. When this affair was finished, Hercules continued his travels and went to the land of Egypt, where he was taken prisoner, and would have been put to death if he had not slain the king of the country and made his escape. Passing through the deserts of Africa, and going as fast as he could, he arrived at last on the shore of the great ocean. And here, unless he could walk on the crest of the billows, it seemed as if his journey must needs be at an end. Nothing was before him save the foaming, dashing, measureless ocean. But suddenly, as he looked toward the horizon, he saw something a great way off, that he had not seen the moment before. It gleamed very brightly, almost as you may have beheld the round golden disk of the sun when it rises or sets over the edge of the world. It evidently grew nearer, for at every instant this wonderful object became larger and more lustrous. At length it had come so nigh that Hercules discovered it to be an immense cup or bowl, made either of gold or burnished brass. How it had got afloat upon the sea is more than I can tell you. But there it was, at all events, rolling on the tumultuous billows which tossed it up and down, and heaved their foamy tops against its sides, but without ever throwing their spray over the brim. I have seen many giants in my time, thought Hercules, but never one who would need to drink his wine out of a cup like this. And true enough, what a cup it must have been. It was as large as, as large, but in short, I am afraid to say how immeasurably large it was. To speak within bounds, it was ten times larger than a great mill wheel, and all of metal as it was, it floated over the heaving surges more lightly than an acorn cup adown the brook. The waves tumbled it onward till it grazed against the shore within a short distance of the spot where Hercules was standing. As soon as this happened, he knew what was to be done, for he had not gone so, through so many remarkable adventures without learning pretty well how to conduct himself, whenever anything came to pass a little out of the common rule. It was clear as daylight that this marvelous cup had been set adrift by some unseen power, and guided hither too, in order to carry Hercules across the sea, on his way to the garden of the Hesperides. Accordingly, without a moment's delay, he clambered over the brim, and slid down on the inside, where, spreading out his lion's skin, he proceeded to take a little repose. He had scarcely rested until now, since he bade farewell to the damsels on the margin of the river. The waves dashed, with a pleasant and ringing sound against the circumference of the hollow cup. It rocked lightly to and fro, and the motion was so soothing that it speedily rocked Hercules into an agreeable slumber. His nap had probably lasted a good while, when the ch cup chanced to graze against a rock, and in consequence immediately resounded and reverberated through its golden or brazen structure a hundred times as loudly as you ever heard a church bell. The nose awoke Hercules, who instantly started up and gazed around him, wondering whereabouts he was. He was not long in discovering that the cup had floated across a great part of the sea and was approaching the shore of what seemed to be an island. And on that island, what do you think he saw? No, you will never guess it, not if you were to try fifty thousand times. It positively appears to me this was the most marvelous spectacle that had ever been seen by Hercules in the whole course of his wonderful travels and adventures. It was a greater marvel than the hydra with nine heads, which kept growing twice as fast before they were cut off, greater than the six-legged man-monster, greater than Antaeus, greater than anything that was ever beheld by anybody before or since the days of Hercules, 
or anything that remains to be beheld by travelers in all the time to come. It was a giant. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform and share our podcast with a friend. Visit our website at www.enchantedlibrary.net to see our past books or to connect with us on Facebook. If you'd like to support the work we do, you can visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash enchantedlibrary. We appreciate your support. Until next time, friends, happy reading.